Hello there, everybody. This is Leo, your Body Mind Success Coach. Today, we're going to focus on a recording on how to get your WordPress site to be optimized so it can be found online. Now, there is on site optimization and there's off site optimization. What we mean by this is that there's things that you can do inside of your website <clears throat> that make it more likely for it to be found so that the search engines know exactly what you are talking about and they know how to categorize it so that people can find it with ease. There's off-site which we're not going to talk about today that's more the link building that's a little bit more involved but the, if you take these steps you will find that you will have much better success at getting your website discovered, found and basically have more visibility. Now after I go through all these steps and before you start feeling like you're overwhelmed with all the steps, I'm going to share with you at the end of the video a very cool tool that will help you make this much shorter process than what I'm about to explain. Okay? Now you can do this without the tool, but it certainly is a lot easier with the tool. And if it so happens that you want to just go ahead and uh, learn more about that tool on your own or get it then I'll tell you how to do that. Okay, so let's get started. There is a list of things that pretty much every website should have so that the search engines know how and what you're optimizing in a page for. In other words, what do you want the search engines to know about this web page so that it knows how to categorize it. Now, the first thing is you want to have the main keyword. In this case, we're going to focus on the key main keyword, memory psychology. You want to have it in the title. If you can have it in the front, excellent. If you can have it in the back, great. If you can have it in the front and the back, even better. Now, it doesn't always make sense. If it works for you, let, let's say this one works for you, memory psychology, infallible mem mem memory psychology, now it's kind of repetitive, but I might be able to fit it in twice. But don't force it, okay? Because people are going to read this. You want them to be able to actually go ahead and be able to read it. Now that you've got the title taken care of, a WordPress, um, if you have the, the settings set up properly with uh, permalinks, which I'm not going to get into today, then you will see that the your URL or the link to will actually have the keyword in it. If you don't know what that means, I'll do another video later to explain that part of it. But you may not even need to if you just put the title in correctly. Now, let's get into the body of the text. Now, the body of the text, I went ahead and we have an article here that's posted. And here's the first tip. Make sure you have the main keyword, the exact keyword, and the first and last last sentence of the article. So there's the first sentence and let's take a look at the last one. There it is on the last sentence. Okay, so there you have that. You can check that off the list. The next thing is you want to have uh, the main keyword show up anywhere between five to ten times within the article. If it's about, if you have an article about five, 500 words or more that's a rough estimate. You basically want it to have what they call a keyword density of two to four percent. That's the ideal. You don't want to overstuff it and you also want to make sure that the search engines know what you're looking for. So there you have it. Five to ten times is generally a good rule of thumb. Now, the next thing is in order for the search engines to kind of know what you're what to look for, they look for what's called headings. Now, there's a heading one, heading two, heading three, four, five, etc but three headings is usually enough and one of the headings is usually taken care of by your title so heading one that's taken care of by the title and your keywords already there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this heading now heading two by clicking on paragraph on this little thing but in case you don't see it um, it tends to be hidden when you press on this little button so there you have it so I highlight the text and then I'm gonna paragraph and I'm gonna you already have a heading one so I'm gonna do a heading two you'll see that the heading the font gets bigger it's just how it's set up so don't worry about that too much the main thing is you want your keyword that's highlighted that's there that's the primary keyword 
And then let's find somewhere else that we can use the a h3 or header 3. Now I'm not gonna mess up my article here so I'm just gonna use the last sentence here and I'm gonna make that an h3. Now you want to vary it. Don't always do it on the last sentence. You know, maybe in the middle if there's a header you can break down some of the paragraphs um, so you can tell them what it's going to be about and you include the keyword in there. That's fine. Don't always, don't follow my exact format. The point is using an H1, which is the title, an H2, and an H3 somewhere in there. So those can be checked off. Now <clears throat> we're going to do the following. We're going to underline bold and italicize the main keyword one time in the article. Now you can manually do it and you can randomize it you know, like this time. Let's say we go ahead and underline it there. <clears throat> there we go. Let's find another place where we put it. Over here. Let's make that italics. And let's see we have it somewhere in here so let's find where that other <clears throat> memory psychology is mm, let's see memory psychology there we go and we're going to bold that one so we've got to bold and underline and italicize don't overdo it once is enough okay so we got another thing checked off it's advisable that any article you write is over four or five hundred words in length if it's not, then go ahead and add a little bit more because otherwise it won't be really uh, enough for the search engines to really know what you're looking, what you're trying to, what you're trying to do. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to focus on is you want to do a little bit of linking. Now, I'm going to do a linking internally so some, to some other page on my site and externally to some other site. Ideally, a website that has some credibility on the search engines already. Something like Wikipedia, something uh, like the Encyclopedia Britannica, something or an, uh, an educational facility, uh, a college, a university. All those tend to have already a good relationship with the search engines. So let's say I want to put Harvard here. So what I'm going to do, I already went ahead and went to Wikipedia and I picked a domain or a URL that had to do with Harvard. So I highlight the keyword Harvard. I'm going to do a link. I'm going to click on there, that little icon which is insert link. I'm going to paste it and in this case if I could actually pick the exact keyword and then have a title of the exact keyword in here that would be another advantage but for right now we're not going to force it we're just going to call it Harvard and if it's an external link we want it to link out um, I mean, it's going to link out so we want it to open up in a separate window so you click on there open the link in a new window that way they don't leave your site you'll click add link and there you go now I'm going to take the opportunity here to share one more thing um, because it'll become important later. Now I don't expect you to really do much code because we want to keep this as easy as possible. So this next little part that I'm going to talk about code, just think of it like a little bit of a um, warning. Hopefully it's really easy for you to do. If you do it, great. If not, it's, an a it's not an absolute must, but it just helps. Every little bit helps. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a little bit of extra code to this link. But in order for me to do that, I need to work in HTML so there's the HTML and if you look in here here I have the link that I just put up Harvard there's the hyperlink it's target blank that means it opens in a new page and then I'm gonna put the words the, the letters REL which means relationship with that link has no follow we don't need to get into the technicalities of it this relationship equals no follow simply means you don't want Google to go uh, get the site distracted by going to visit that other website. You just want to let them know that you link to that. That's it. If you feel comfortable doing that, great. If you don't feel comfortable, leave it alone. Go back to visual. 
and we have one of our links taken care of. That's an external link. Now let's actually go ahead and in, do an internal link. So let's find, let's make the word psychology a link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a little word. I'm going to highlight it, link, and find something in your site that is somewhat um, related to this. So psychology online. That would make sense. So we click on that. There's the link, psychology online. And since it's an internal link, it can open in the same window. If you want to open a separate one, that's fine too, but I'm just going to leave it as that. Click Add Link, and we've taken care of an external link, taken care of an internal link, and we're almost done. Okay? Remember, stay with me, because I'm going to show you a tool that's going to help you take care of a lot of this on its own, and you don't have to worry too much. Okay? Final thing. You want an image in here somewhere. So let's show you how to do that. Let's say we want to put an image somewhere right here, and we want that to be lined up to the right. So that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor right there, right before the well. I'm going to click on the hyperlink for Add Media. It's going to take a moment. And then I'm going to look on my computer for an image. Now, I already happen to have one, so I'm going to go to Desktop, and I named it memory psychology so memory psychology if you can name it exactly the name of your main keyword even better click open and upload what that's going to is going to take the image and upload it into your website now if you picked the name memory psychology as your picture then it makes it easier for you to fix the title here memory take away the dash psychology so now this image is going to have memory psychology as its title, so to speak. And Google will, again, know what uh, that this is talking about memory psychology. Now, final last little thing on here. You want this to be aligned right. Uh, full size is fine. And then click Insert into Post. Once you do that, you will see that your image is right there, taken care of. And when I hover over it, you see memory psychology. Ta-da! This takes care of pretty much everything in your article. Now, I'm going to show you one tool. I promise you I'll show you one tool to see how we did on this whole process. So let's see how we did before we publish it. There's this little plugin that's called SEO Presser. And I, you can click through the link that I share with you with this video. So if you want to learn more about it and if you want to get it yourself. And check out what it does. All I do is put in the main keyword in here, memory psychology, and I am going to press update. Give it a moment. It refreshes my screen, and it gives me a score. Look at this. I got a 78.89%. Now, I didn't get 100%, but anything over 75% is going to be really good. Now, let me explain to you why I didn't get 100% so that you understand and why it doesn't really, this score doesn't matter to me as much because I know that I scored really well. It says here, it gives me in red, you do not have an H1 tag in my keyword. Well, I do, but it doesn't recognize it. My title is going to be an H1 tag but you can't see that until you actually publish it and you'll see it in the post. So if I click on the post, this, the fact that it's bolded and underlined and I mean bolded and pretty big, it's, it's an H1 tag. Okay? So it doesn't know that. The second thing, remember that I said that ideally you want to have a 2 to 4 percent keyword density. Well it calculates the density for me for the word memory psychology. So it would behoove me to add maybe a couple more times the word memory psychology wherever I can fit it and it makes sense. And then this would be perfect for this particular post. If I missed any of the steps that we talked about, it'll give me a red, a red uh, X. Now here it only had one because I already did the work myself. Now let me show you some one of the reasons why I love this plugin.
and what I completely recommend anybody that's using WordPress uses it. If I click on SEO Presser and I go to the settings, some of the steps that I had taken myself are now no longer um, need to be done by me. Look at this. If I click on this little link right here, it says allow SEO Presser to automatically decorate my keywords with bold. So it would automatically do it for me. It allows me to put it in italic. It already does that for me. Puts it in underline so I don't have to think about that step. Allows it to automatically add the, remember that alt keyword and I told you to, to make sure that the title is the keyword well you don't have to think about that it does it for you allow it to automatically add the keyword in the post titles perfect and now this one I'm not going to use that particular function but um, this would automatically put it in my post titles which is excellent in case I forgot so once I have these these steps these things checked off and the settings are set up exactly how I want them then I'm ready to go. I don't have to do much anything else. So this is beautiful because now any posts that I have in my site that are already existing, it'll do all that for me. I don't actually have to go back and make all those changes. And if I wanted to see how I did, I can actually click on my post score. Here in this case I have two posts and let's in this one is sex addicts blog my main keyword on there you can check it out yourself there and it tells you right there I'm at 61 percent so there are things that I could do here and if I click on suggestions it's gonna tell me exactly what my suggestions are it tells me what to do okay so it it makes it such that I have an automatic checking list checklist out of any of my posts and when you go to your posts and then you go inside any of your posts remember it will give you that score right away if you happen to change it let's say I just wanted memory see how well optimized I am for just the word memory then I would go update and let's see how we did on that one 82% even better. See, I have keyword density 2.43, 82%, and so I'm ranking really, I'm optimized really well for the word memory. It remembers 82%. I bet you that if I put an H1 tag and it remembers that it's an H1 tag, it'll give me 100%. Now, you don't have to have 100%, remember, but the higher, the better. Well, I made this video way longer than I intended to, but I wanted to make sure that you got everything that you needed. So, I if you if this is a value to you and you think that you are going to make use of this plugin uh, might I invite you to just go ahead and uh, go to bodymindsuccess.com forward slash SEO presser which is the link that I give you with this video and below um, that way it's one of those ways that it's my affiliate link and it allows me to generate just a little bit of income so I can keep creating these tutorials for people without charging them anything so if it's useful to you if you had some benefit from it, that's a way you can say thank you to me. Okay, I trust you have a fantastic day, that this was useful to you, and we'll go, um, hopefully all of your pages get found by Google, and you're ranking, and then you get everything that you want. Have a fantastic day. Bye.